In this video, we are going to dive deep into the fascinating world of RNA transcription. RNA transcription is a fundamental biological process where a segment of DNA is copied into RNA by the enzyme RNA polymerase. This process is critical for the synthesis of proteins, which are essential for various cellular functions. Understanding RNA transcription is crucial for comprehending how genetic information is transferred and expressed within cells. Now let's learn about the mechanism of RNA transcription. RNA transcription begins with the initiation phase. During this stage, RNA polymerase binds to a specific region of the DNA known as the promoter. The promoter is a sequence of DNA that signals the start of a gene. It contains specific motifs, such as the Tata box in eukaryotes, which facilitate the binding of RNA polymerase and other transcription factors. In prokaryotes, the promoter region often contains minus 35 and minus 10 sequences upstream of the transcription start site. These sequences are recognized by the sigma factor, a subunit of RNA polymerase, which aids in the accurate initiation of transcription. Once RNA polymerase is bound to the promoter, the elongation phase begins. During elongation, RNA polymerase unwinds the DNA double helix and synthesizes a complementary RNA strand using one of the DNA strands as a template. The enzyme moves along the DNA, adding ribonucleotides to the growing RNA chain in a 5- to 3- direction. A notable aspect of elongation is the formation of a transcription bubble, a region where the DNA is temporarily unwound, allowing the RNA polymerase to read the template strand. This process ensures that the genetic information encoded in the DNA is accurately transcribed into RNA. The final phase of RNA transcription is termination. In prokaryotes, termination can occur through two main mechanisms, row-dependent and row-independent termination. Row-dependent termination involves the row protein. This protein binds to the RNA and causes RNA polymerase to dissociate from the DNA. Row-independent termination relies on a hairpin structure in the RNA. This structure is followed by a sequence of uracil residues, Together, they destabilize the RNA-DNA hybrid and release the RNA transcript. In eukaryotes, termination involves cleavage of the newly synthesized RNA transcript. This is followed by polyadenylation. Specific sequences in the RNA facilitate this process. A set of proteins recognizes these sequences. This ensures the RNA transcript is properly processed and ready for translation. In prokaryotes, transcription and translation occur simultaneously in the cytoplasm. This coupling is possible because prokaryotic cells lack a defined nucleus. Ribosomes can attach to the nascent RNA transcript and begin protein synthesis even before transcription is complete. The RNA polymerase in prokaryotes is relatively simple. It consists of a core enzyme and a sigma factor that initiates transcription. An example of prokaryotic transcription can be seen in the bacterium E. coli. In this bacterium, the LAC operon is a well-studied model of gene regulation. The LAC operon contains genes involved in lactose metabolism. It is regulated by the presence or absence of lactose. When lactose is present, it binds to the repressor protein. This causes the repressor to detach from the operator region, allowing RNA polymerase to transcribe the operon's genes. Eukaryotic transcription, on the other hand, is more complex and occurs within the nucleus. Eukaryotic cells have three main types of RNA polymerases, RNA polymerase 1, 2, and 3. Each one is responsible for transcribing different classes of genes. RNA polymerase 2 transcribes protein coding genes. It requires a set of general transcription factors to initiate transcription. For example, in the transcription of a typical eukaryotic gene, the Tata binding protein binds to the Tata box in the promoter region. 
Tata binding protein is a component of the transcription factor TF2D. This binding recruits other transcription factors and RNA polymerase II. Together, they form a pre-initiation complex, which then begins the transcription process. Let's learn about regulation of RNA transcription now. Regulation of transcription in prokaryotes often involves operons, which are the clusters of genes under the control of a single promoter. The LAC operon mentioned earlier is an example of an inducible operon, where the presence of an inducer molecule lactose triggers transcription. Conversely, the tryptophan operon is a repressible operon that is turned off when the end product tryptophan is abundant. Eukaryotic transcription regulation is more intricate and involves multiple layers of control. These include promoter proximal elements, enhancers, silencers, and insulators, which interact with various transcription factors and regulatory proteins. For example, enhancers are DNA sequences that can significantly increase the transcription of a gene when bound by specific transcription factors. These enhancers can be located thousands of base pairs away from the gene they regulate. The interaction between enhancers and promoters often involves the formation of DNA loops, bringing distant regulatory elements into close proximity with the transcription initiation complex. Epigenetic modifications also play a crucial role in regulating transcription. These modifications include DNA methylation and histone modification, which can alter the accessibility of the DNA to the transcription machinery. For instance, DNA methylation typically occurs at cytosine residues within CPG islands and is associated with gene silencing. Methylated DNA recruits proteins that compact the chromatin structure, making the DNA less accessible for transcription. Histone modifications, such as acetylation and methylation, can either promote or repress transcription. The effect depends on the specific amino acids that are modified and the type of modification. In eukaryotes, the primary RNA transcript, also known as pre-mRNA, undergoes several modifications before becoming mature mRNA. One of the first modifications is the addition of a 5-cap. The 5-cap is a modified guanine nucleotide added to the 5-end of the RNA transcript. This cap protects the RNA from degradation and assists in the initiation of translation. Another critical modification is RNA splicing. Eukaryotic genes often contain introns, which are non-coding sequences that interrupt the coding regions or exons. During splicing, introns are removed and exons are joined together to form a continuous coding sequence. This process is carried out by the spliceosome, which are a complex of small nuclear RNAs and proteins. Alternative splicing allows a single gene to produce multiple protein isoforms by including or excluding certain exons. This mechanism increases the diversity of proteins that can be generated from a single gene and is a key factor in the complexity of higher eukaryotes. The final major modification is the addition of a poly tail at the three dash end of the RNA transcript. This process, known as polyadenylation, involves the cleavage of the RNA at a specific site, followed by the addition of a string of adenine nucleotides. The poly tail enhances the stability of the RNA and facilitates its export from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. Now we will learn about the role of RNA polymerases in the process of transcription. RNA polymerase 1 is responsible for transcribing ribosomal RNA genes, which are essential components of ribosomes. In eukaryotes, the rRNA genes are organized in tandem repeats within the nucleolus, a specialized region of the nucleus. The transcripts produced by RNA polymerase 1 are processed and assembled into ribosomes, which are the cellular machinery for protein synthesis. RNA polymerase 2 is the most well-studied and is responsible for transcribing messenger RNA and some small nuclear RNAs. It requires a set of general transcription factors to initiate transcription. The mRNAs produced by RNA polymerase II serve as templates for protein synthesis during translation. 
RNA polymerase 3 transcribes, transfer RNA genes, 5 srRNA genes, and other small RNAs involved in various cellular processes. These small RNAs play critical roles in translation, RNA processing, and the regulation of gene expression. General transcription factors are essential for the transcription of all protein coding genes in eukaryotes. They include TF2A, TF2B, TF2D, TF2E, TF2F, and TF2H. These factors assist RNA polymerase II in recognizing the promoter, forming the pre-initiation complex, and unwinding the DNA. For instance, TF2D, which includes the TBP subunit, binds to the Tata box and recruits other GTFs and RNA polymerase II to the promoter. TF2H possesses helicase activity that unwinds the DNA and kinase activity that phosphorylates the C-terminal domain of RNA polymerase II, initiating transcription. Specific transcription factors bind to regulatory elements such as enhancers or silencers to modulate the transcription of specific genes. These factors can act as activators or repressors, depending on their interaction with other proteins and the transcription machinery. An example of a specific transcription factor is the estrogen receptor. It binds to estrogen response elements in the DNA and regulates the expression of genes involved in cell growth and differentiation in response to estrogen. Mitochondria, the energy-producing organelles in eukaryotic cells, have their own DNA and transcription machinery. Mitochondrial RNA polymerase, similar to bacterial RNA polymerase, transcribes the mitochondrial genome. This genome encodes essential components of the electron transport chain and ATP synthesis. Mitochondrial transcription is regulated by mitochondrial transcription factor A and other factors. These factors ensure the proper expression of mitochondrial genes in response to the cell's energy needs. Chloroplasts, found in plant cells, also contain their own DNA and transcription machinery. Chloroplast RNA polymerase is responsible for transcribing genes involved in photosynthesis and other chloroplast functions. Like mitochondria, chloroplasts have transcription factors that regulate gene expression in response to environmental cues and the developmental stage of the plant. And there you have it, a glimpse into the intricate process of RNA transcription. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey. See you in the next video.